first place. One of my friends, anything you want to mention, sir? No, sir. Uh, we are clear, so therefore we move to the lieutenant governor of the great state of Mississippi, Delbert Hoseman, from the Trustmark Studios. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good, Paul. It's a little rainy out there. Yeah. I've got my Ducks Unlimited coat on here. I, and I know if I've been <laughs> wet, rain, rain resistant and all that warm. Uh, 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 approved apparel for the for the morning. It so. is, and I, I miss yeah. duck season. It's over, as you know, but um, it's a little bit of... Goose season may still be open if you apply for it, but duck season's over, and that's always kind of sad. Well, <laughs> let's talk about a couple of things here. Uh, again, right. again, we have limited time, so sure. um, um, first of all, uh, which one do you want to take in first, the tax or the duck? Start unlimited? with the tax is fine. Yeah, I mean, let's, it's, it's let's start with that one and, and, and start talking. I think it's House Bill. Uh, I forgot what the House Bill number is, but it really doesn't. Matter. Is it twelve thirty one? Of or whatever it happens to be, the income tax uh, bill. Where are we now with that one, and, and what does it look like in the Senate, and what what are your objections? Well, the um, where we are right now, we got the bill, I think, last Wednesday, mm-hmm. and uh, I spent a good bit of uh, the last weekend and others trying to figure it out. It's 308 pages long, but it refers to a whole, lot of code sections. And um, <clears throat> we have asked a state economist to come forward and, and do projections for, for this bill. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've asked a, a CPA firm here that I have a lot of confidence in that uh, we have a lot of good CPA firms. This one is good as well. And ask them to do projections on how this actually works. Um, <clears throat> part of this, uh, I, I haven't seen any of the modeling, Paul. When, whenever you take uh, something that's $2.7 billion, and you start to move deductions and income and expenses around, you have economic effects. <clears throat> People may not buy as many tractors, mm-hmm. or they may buy them out of state, or they may do this or that or the other. You'll see a lot of movements that are generated really by tax policy, and that sets by such purchasing policy. And so I want to make sure, even though uh, you, you, you have these numbers that may match now, those numbers are not static. If you raise the price of tractors, do people buy as many tractors? If you raise the price of cars, do people buy as many cars? And so what happens in the guns and butter as we took in economics when we were in college? What happens to that? If I'm going to ask that question, hold on. Just to get into the weeds on all of these things, if I'm going to ask that question, because I know farmers were a big part of this. Not only farmers, but truckers and anybody who had small businesses. Yeah, some of their their, their average tractor price went up $8,000. So if do we know what the surrounding states... We did. Uh, their taxes we are. Did. Would they be more or less or about the and, same? Uh, well, uh, they're exempt, for example, in Arkansas. So, mm-hmm. we, I mean, you start with that. Our tax rate of 9.5 plus uh, 0.7% uh, will be, I think, the second highest in the country uh, for sales tax other than California. Uh, and higher than most of our surrounding, although our surrounding states are very close. Tennessee, for example, has about a nine and a half percent rate. I don't want to confuse people. That's sales we're tax. talking about we're talking about uh, farm equipment and things such as that. that the farm be, equipment. There's one percent. It would be up to four, three, right. so three and a half, uh, three and a half, three and a half percent. So. If I buy a car in Tennessee now, when I come back, I still got to pay the taxes. You're supposed to pay the use tax. Would that correct. be the same thing on a tractor? You would hope that it would, Paul. And um, is that not um, in the bill? It, the bill says that it goes up, and you have a use tax mm-hmm. now. Um, to make sure that everybody pays that is another thing. We've had issues with uh, motors, for example. You know, as a fisherman, a motor is very expensive. Some people don't register those things. There's no registration for them. They buy them in Alabama and bring them over here. But you can't get your tag unless you have that. Uh, uh, you don't you? have a tag on a... No, I'm uh, talking about on a car, or truck, or... Uh, on a car and truck, you no. have to get a tag. That's correct. That's how you catch the use tag. Tractor, you, you don't have the same. No, you don't have the yeah. same, and you don't have it on, on, a, on an engine, like an outboard mm-hmm. motor engine. Those kinds of things are not, are not done that way, and we so it's it's very problematic, I think, to make sure that all the funds are collected. When you said uh, 2.7 billion, the income tax, personal income tax total, uh, is it 2.7 billion? I was under the impression it was 1.3 or 1.5. No, or something like no, that. that's not correct, Paul. No. Uh, the the combined lowering of the gas, of, I'm sorry, the grocery tax to three and a half percent, plus the elimination of the uh, income tax is 2.6 billion dollars. 
Now, what they have done uh, in the bill, as best I can determine it now, and again, we're going over it in detail, but yeah. what they've done is they've added um, $1 billion in sales tax revenue and then about another $250 million in uh, ancillary revenue, cars, uh, tobacco, uh, electric bills. Uh, like uh, I know Chevron had it says it's going to cost them about another $5.7 million, others uh, $8 million. The co-ops tell us it's going to cost 12 to $17 million on these taxations. So that all of those, that $250 million only gets you to $1.2 billion. So you're $1.4 billion short, and the way they make that up is by gradually raising the uh, exemption amount uh, mm-hmm. and off, and using inflation. So there wouldn't be any inf- – there would be inflation, not any inflation above 1.5%. And quite frankly, Mississippi's lived off inflation the last few years, Paul. You remember when Governor uh, Bryant started, the the budget was about $4.5 billion, now it's about $5.6 billion, and, and we have cut the, the legislature in their wisdom – cut the franchise tax we've cut the three percent tax uh, mm. on your lower income that's about 30 million a would, year would you have done that yeah i thought it was a good idea yeah. because we've lived up to it uh but this one is a pretty gigantic step paul are you opposed to doing that uh if you, do you think there is a solution that uh, you could find between the house and senate to to do, to do this in the future i, 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 I understand do. it's going to be on a graduated basis on a gradual phase in right and, and there are some, I don't want to say clawbacks, but there are some, uh, there are some safety measures in there as far as inflation is concerned uh, or revenue. If we don't get the revenue, then we, don't, we postpone that particular You, you phase postpone out. the uh, part, you right. stop the phase out. So you, you did about 40, under this scenario, it was about 40% of the oh, yeah. phase so out. So what, what's your solution to this? Well, if, uh, the, this is a complicated ball of wax. My, my solution is to st- study the bill that is sent to, the, to us to the House and determine what parts of it have some issues with it. For example, the Advantage Jobs Credit is a tax credit by businesses that when they create jobs. Uh, if they don't have any uh, tax, they don't, the Advantage Job Credit goes away. The Inventory Tax Credit that we're phasing out goes away. There's no credit against the tax. In certain instances, LLCs and individuals, those kinds of things. The nonprofit agencies are, are, are bothersome to me. Are they going to be able to continue to raise the monies that they do now as mm-hmm. a nonprofit agencies? Uh, the actual cost to directly to a farmer, Paul, farmers don't pass through costs. They don't up their grain prices, for example, or their cotton prices. It is what it is. And um, so when, when you raise uh, taxes on them, on a whole number of things, on their, electro- on their electricity, on, on their actually farm vehicles and others, when you raise those taxes on them, they don't have a pass-through. If if you raise it at the uh, restaurants like they're doing now, they just up the price another, you know, two and a half percent or whatever it is, and and everybody just absorbs it. That's that's that absorption doesn't occur in a farmer. We, when you when you talk about a day-to-day basis on this, but I, I don't want to forget the people out there because we're talking about the farmer. A farmer doesn't buy a five hundred thousand dollar combine every day or every year. No, no. And I understand that we the, the consumer is not going to buy a car every year. No, every two. Three One of the years examples average. that uh, people well these days it's even longer than mm-hmm. that. So the example people are using, or uh, the house used, is if you make fifty thousand dollars, you're going to get back two thousand thirty dollars, mm-hmm. which means that you would go have to go out and, and consume or buy eighty one thousand dollars worth of, uh, mm-hmm. of 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 whatever you're buying to to negate that two thousand thirty dollars. Yeah, not that one car did it. Well, if you're buying a car that's eighty one thousand dollars on a fifty thousand well, I mean, dollar income, but you're, but you're, you've got some problems. You're there. also gonna have other you're gonna eat, you <laughs> well, know. And I mean you Well gonna, I understand that. I mean it's but not I mean, static. But now are are the economists gonna look at that figure and absolutely. see if that's right or a- not? Absolutely. And I, you know, I noticed, Paul, um uh, when we're going through each of these and mm-hmm. I and I have been asking everybody from the Mississippi Economic Council to the MMA to the Mississippi Manufacturers Association to to co ops to everybody to to give us input yep. on this, and we're getting that input. And I have some the tax foundation. Let's, let's talk about that more. Okay. And I agree with you, and I've said it on the air. When something is this big, it's complicated. It it should be uh, done maybe during the summertime and prepare for this with the House and Senate working hand in hand to get this done. Um, and we'll continue to talk about that, and also the Wildlife uh, Trust Fund when we come back sure. with. The Lieutenant Governor of the State, Dawn Starnes, National Federation of Independent Businesses. It'll be an interesting topic that'll play off of what we're talking about, the state income tax bill and what it would mean to business owners. 
Starn says the devil is in the details. The NFIB is uh, looking for compromise on the bill as it stands now. We'll talk to her. Studio, Delbert Holtzman, the lieutenant governor of the great state of Mississippi. We're talking uh, right now about HB uh, 1439, the income tax bill. And um, as it stands, um, it's got very little chance in the Senate. No, I don't. I don't think that's correct. Um, there's um, a, a real interest in tax reform in the Senate, mm-hmm. um, and I have. And, you know, quite frankly, I have not had one senator say they want to pass this bill as proposed. Uh, but there is a good bit of interest in tax reform. Is there enough time to do this to work this? Because you know, it's a massive funny, bill. Funny, you should say that, yeah. Paul. The Tax Foundation, who the, who the state of Mississippi, the uh, House hired in 2016 to look at our bill. They said in in their thing, in their release, they've been identif- they've been reviewing this bill the last couple of days, and they have a big long. And I encourage y'all to read it. It's under taxfoundation.org. But it says, with the bill now handed, the Senate lawmakers should take the time that remains in the session to ensure that the final legislation is sustainable, and will enable Mississippi to meet its needs. And then it goes on further to say. This is the taxfoundation.org group that, that state hired, and, and it goes on further to say nine states don't have an inter, you know, uh, any kind of income tax, but proponents and opponents often fast talk each other. Some have little interest in acknowledging that Texas, Florida, and Tennessee have no taxes, mm-hmm. which, we, that, which they do, and, and many other states have reduced their income taxes, too, looking at it now, West Virginia and us, by the way. Some of the other side would prefer to talk about the Kansas event where haste, wishful thinking, and a desire to implement a sizable tax cut without identifying offsets or spending reductions made for a notoriously failed experiment. With the bill now headed to the Senate, lawmakers should take the time that remains to ensure that the final legislation is sustainable and will enable Mississippi to go forward and meet its goals. So that's the process I think we're in right now, Paul. We're analyzing the bill. Uh, we we absolutely don't want a Kansas event. Uh, we do want to reduce the income taxes as much as we possibly can uh, in Mississippi. We're doing that now. It's about $30 million. We phase out the 3% this year. But there are a lot of unintended consequences who have raised their ugly heads here. And, and a lot of the uh, in- entities that have gotten increases in taxes on cars and alcohol and uh, electricity and uh, uh, you pick it <laughs> all of those things that were affected negatively affected have raised some great concerns about their ability to perform but again i don't want to forget the other the end user on this one as they say is the the people of the state of mississippi right. getting back literally millions upon millions of dollars that will go into the system to produce more taxes one way or the other and other things uh, and sales as far as uh, small businesses in, this, the, in the state. Uh, the concept that we sh- shift to uh, uh, a, con- a tax proposal mm-hmm. that is strictly on consumption, not on earnings, uh, there is a balance there, uh, certainly, um, whether it's 9.5% tax rate, second highest in the country or not. I don't know that. Uh, but the the broad base of taxation right now, we have grocery tax, mm-hmm. uh, which I'd like to lower personally. We have sales tax at seven, and it goes to nine and a half. We have a number of different ones like uh, tractors and whatnot at different rates. So we've we've kind of had a balance across the system. When you pull a lot of these out, you get unbalanced. Now, you're not seeing that the 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 tax on farm equipment and some other equipment at one and a half percent now. So it would be four, uh, is the second highest. No, one percent. No, uh, it or is, even at four percent. At four percent, it will be one of the, the highest. That mm-hmm. is correct, and uh, because other states don't have implemented ones that don't tax uh, farm implements, so it would be yeah. one of the highest at that. the The rate on the nine and a half, nine point five seven, I think, is the second mm-hmm. highest in the country uh, sales tax rate. Would Would you agree that we do have a problem uh, competing in the future as far as personal income tax with other southern states that have abolished theirs? We Mississippi, there are nine states that don't have taxes, Paul. Mm-hmm. There are about, um, uh, I'd say, uh, about uh, five or six have some flat rate. And then there are 31 states that have a gradual rate. Of those 31 states that have a gradual rate, we are the fifth lowest. So the other mm-hmm. 27 or whatever, many that is, 26 or whatever, up to 31, uh, have a higher income tax rate than we, are, than we do. Now, th- what that tells you and what's so important here is we need to have people have a sufficient spendable income to generate the economy. We're, we're a consumer economy. 
but we really have to make sure that we have a educated workforce. That's going to be the key okay. to all of this. Uh, now, if we go give money back and it, it's not, and we don't have an educated workforce, I don't, I don't know that we do anything. One more question because I don't, I want to get to the wildlife because okay. we're on, we're going to run out of time before we do this. Is are, are you concerned on the other part of this that, the, and I think it was made explicitly clear by the in the House's argument and debate on this that we have a problem with the income tax level because the base of people who are actually paying, both those who are exempt legally and those who are underground economy, if 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 they were doing what we're supposed to, um, we would probably have double the amount that we're getting. How do we solve that situation? Well. Uh, I think one of the solutions been offered by the state. I do. I can see us reducing, as we did the three percent rate. I can, I can see us reducing the rate of income tax, personal income tax, and moving to more of a consumption tax in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably okay. A mass movement like this, with a whole bunch of unintended consequences and ones in which we have not thought out right. You're dead right about this. Uh, they sent me this bill, and I, my house did to the Senate. Senator Harkins and I and all of us are pouring through every kind of thing. We're asking CPA firms to analyze it. We're getting some numbers different than what was given to us by, close, but different from what was given to us by the House. We're doing our due diligence. Is there a timetable for their report? Uh, we got two weeks. Uh, to, is all I got left here. Uh, will, I mean, they, we all will, go they, home. will the I mean, economy, will, they, will the questions that you want be answered in two weeks? We, I can't answer that. All I can tell you is I start every morning by pushing CPAs. Uh, They've told me that the uh, state economist is going to take about another week. I think a lot of that will flow, f- uh, flesh out. Right. Whether we can do something or not or some portion or some counterproposal, Stay tuned. We, 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 I would like to see that come. Y- if you do mark up a new bill, will it, it, is it possible in this session with the time allotted? It's very close, Paul. I, I'm not going to promise that we'll get right. it out. I will Let's tell talk you about, this: we're going to yeah. start. If we miss this, if mm-hmm. this do, doesn't coagulate into something that we can that we can address, we will spend, as you have requested, mm-hmm. uh, the summer working on tax reform. HB uh, 1231. Let's talk about mm-hmm. this. This is the Wildlife Fund. You yeah. Know, your uh, Ducks Unlimited jacket uh, reminds me of the Ducks Unlimited. Yeah, I had it on his, his, uh, water uh, and, I needed and, the water and, repellent and stuff a, today. And a bevy or covey of other people who are in uh, love wildlife. Wildlife. Right. We have a problem with wildlife and parks. We have a lot of people who uh, use the outdoors. What's your objection in the Senate to uh, HB 1231? Well, I, I, I think the uh, philosophy is great. Um, that's where we want to go. We want more public spaces. As you know, I, I acquired almost 20,000 acres during my 12 years at uh, Secretary of State's office and uh, on an island. Uh, now you own an island, a uh, cat island off the coast. And I did that um, with. That's about $50 million was spent. I spent $400,000 of state funds. All the rest of it was run from others. So I have some experience in this area. We, the bill as proposed had several fallacies in it. One, they want to start a separate agency and an agency that could spend up to $800,000 a year. Well, the budget for the whole lieutenant governor's office is not but about five hundred. dollars The trust fund mechanism would be declared or defined as an agency? Yeah, agency, a state state agency. Government. They have the right. They have the right to spend $800,000 a year, and they spent, they could, under that scenario, they could pick and choose whatever park properties they wanted to invest that money in. I understand it, but the cost removed. of operating would be eight hundred thousand dollars for this board. Three percent to the uh, one, one percent to the board, and three <clears> percent to the Department of Finance Administration. It's in the bill. So four percent, and they want to acquire twenty so, million dollars. So what you're seeing is not a pro bono basis as far no. as their service on that. No, they get a per diem, but they've got eight. They got up to eight hundred. If it's a twenty million dollars, four percent is eight hundred thousand right. dollars. Then the second thing, that, and that's problematic to me, that we start another agency like that. And so the second part of that was that they had uh, the use could be for non-governmental ent- entities. Now, these are sometimes called these non, uh, non-governmental entities or, or uh, something other than the government that's a charity. You just announced today a, 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 a somebody that got arrested by Shad White in a non-governmental entity, a non-profit funded mm-hmm. with state money. We, we're very leery of that. Um, we've had a bad experience with non-governmental entities, uh, so this we would like for this money to be appropriated by the legislature, and I think that makes uh, makes a whole lot of sense. You have marked up a new bill on that? We have. It'll Can be we talk about it when we come back? Sure. We, we, I'll tell you what, it's, it's coming out today, and uh, we're really excited about it. I think right. it's going to be a very positive thing. It takes the House position and, I think, mm-hmm. improves on what we did. Final segment with the Lieutenant Governor coming up. 
The Lieutenant Governor, we're speaking about the wildlife. Here's the deal. You said you marked up a new bill, and uh, we tell me what, what all about that. What's I think it's, I think I think it's much better. There were a couple of things that bothered us about the bill uh, in the Senate side. Mm-hmm. The first was it was able to be used to, uh, for the restoration and enhancement of privately owned working agricultural lands and forests. Basically, it could be used for private uh, purposes. Uh, we've got enough problems with our parks, Paul, as you know, and our trails and our and our municipal work. We got plenty of money to spend, and we can we need to, I mean plenty of needs, and we need to spend our money on public property and public access. That's what Pitt and Robinson is about. In 2019, they gave Mississippi 10 million dollars. Uh, despite my request, I can't find out how much Pitt and Robinson money has been used for acquisitions in the last two years. We used it tr- extensively to buy the uh, 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 Bryant uh, Wildlife Refuge, 17,000 acres over in Warren and Issaquina counties, the last big purchase that I made while I was Secretary of State. That f- those funds are available are on a 75-25 match, so this, the part of this new foundation would be to use uh, put up money from the state to match the federal money so that we can use it on state public property, on state property, yep. not on yep. private lands. Private lands, and you know, I, I read in there, Ducks Unlimited said, boy, if we can get a hold of this money, think how much we can do. Well, I'm a 40- or 50-year member of Ducks Unlimited, and they do great work. But we've got our own needs right here, and they need to raise their dollars in the private industry. And our public money needs to go for public park access, just like we bought those thousands of acres. We've got another 800 acres we need to buy up in the Delta, uh, up near the Scatters. Several of those need to be matched and purchased with, uh, with the Pittman-Robinson Act and matching state money. So I didn't want to get into the private act. Now, I didn't want to start a whole new agency, you know, spend an agency. And spend so, so what's the solution? What you'll see is, I think, is that there will be a trust put out and and there will be a a group uh, appointed by the governor, four by the governor, three by the lieutenant governor. That was another problem. They had two people are appointed by the speaker to the lieutenant governor under their Lane case. Our, yeah. My lawyers tell me that, you, that that the speaker can't appoint people to boards. So we, we've cured a lot of those issued issues. What will come down to, I think, is that there will be a certain set of money set aside aimed at the various how projects. How much are we talking about? Don't know. It depends on how I much heard, they need. I heard a million. Is that going to be mi- enough? A million may be, may be plenty. It, uh, uh, the, you have to find out what they're buying. You know, if they're buying a, mm-hmm. uh, let's say they're buying a $4 million process, if we put up, they put up $3 million with the Pittman-Robinson, we would put up a million. So that would that would take care of a $4 million purchase. Yeah. If it's a $10 million purchase, we'd have to put up $2.5 million to use this Pittman-Robinson money. That money started in 1937, Paul, and we have used it sporadically, but I don't think we've used it as well as we need to. And we ought to so, use the federal money that's free before we start cutting so you, teachers you out. you would still do it through the the uh, uh, the structure of a trust? We would still have a we would still and have a trust that yeah. would be able to do some matching. You'd and take out the private uh, language. You'd take the private language out, and the right. appointments I think have to be made by the governor and the lieutenant governor. The oversights on the final uh, jobs that are grants that would be given out would be over the legislature. The legislature they would come back to the legislature and say we've identified these three pieces yeah. of property. Why there. couldn't the wildlife uh, department do that? Or wildlife why, why couldn't you run it through wildlife then? Wildlife, why would you need that? Wildlife, fishers, and parks uh, should. Because they have the Pittman Robinson mm-hmm. money, we, we signed it in 2012. We signed an agreement with the, with the federal government to use the Pittman Robinson money. And by the way, it says specifically that it can only give advice on private landowners, yeah. not redo the work like they're talking about here. So anyway, uh, I think people want to spend their public money on public lands. And so when we get when we get out here to Pittman Robinson, they need to tell us we've got these three locations. I've met with them on two already. It's going to cost X dollars, and therefore I need a match of Y dollars, and the legislature will write a check for that. Yeah. Now, some years it may be two or three million dollars, some years it may be eight or ten million dollars. I, I can't tell you, but all of those, Paul, we we don't print money, so that's why we have to be so judicious. We're trying to do a teacher pay raise. That's mm-hmm. about forty-five million dollars. They want to set aside fifteen million dollars. That means a six hundred dollar teacher pay raise instead of a thousand dollar teacher pay raise. However you do this, uh, you have to take money from one side to the other, and you have to be so cognizant of that that we only have limited funds here. So we, we want to ec- we want to use these when they're multiplied out like Pittman-Robinson and other funds. There's a dingle bill that has more to do with fisheries. Mm-hmm. 
But you'll see the legislature, uh, at least me anyway, I kind of speak for everybody else, be very adamant in favor of acquiring public property for public access. Is there a House bill number on that? The House bill number that came to us, and I met with uh, uh, Representative Bounds, is um, 1231. No, no, I mean your bill. No, I, we will be remitted his bill. We'll make some minor amendments. So you're going to make some amendments on yeah, we're going to adopt oh, okay, his bill. And, and we're going to adopt uh, Scott's bill, but it's going to have that It'll go to conference. It'll go to conference. And we're, well, uh, next week, wouldn't it? Or is it next week? Within the next two weeks, yes. Next two weeks. And then we've got a funding component, but we, we, we don't want to use it on private lands, and we don't want to th- start a third agency. But the other, the guts of the bill mm-hmm. to help public parks and others, I think those all stay and will be supported by the legislature, supported by the Senate anyway. Both income tax and the state parks and things such as that, there are problems I think we could both identify. The The, the point is uh, there's got to be a solution. you just got to find that solution, and you got to work together to do that. And I think that's what the people of our state want is the House and Senate to do that. I, I, I can't. I started last night. I've been on it early this morning, <laughs> about 2 o'clock, and I'm, I'm right, and we're doing our stuff. So Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.